Oh, all right, another sunny day in Minecraft, yeah? Putting down torches and making it safe. Do you... What? Where is he going? What is it? Oh, God, oh, God, run away! Oh, God. Run, 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 run. These guys are fast. I like that. Oh, keep going, keep going. We're nearly there. Oh, I bet he's right behind me. Is he right behind... Oh, God. Oh, God. Get inside, get inside. Yeah! Check out all this delicious man flesh that you don't get. Please go away. Hello and welcome to Guide Numero Dose Early Game Stability. I'm your host, B.R. Brainerd. After April Fool's Day, my appearance is back to normal. Don't mind the blood. It's not human. Well, it is human, but it's not what you think. My date, uh, some months... Well, let's just say the bedroom looks like somebody crushed a tomato with a 2x4. Okay, down to the business. First up are these fancy smanchy new storage units from Dartcraft. They're basic chests, but they don't require any wood, as you can see from the recipe, so if you've got more cobble lying around than wood, and you're likely to, they can be a good early game option. They're linked to the player that places them. If we click on the book here, if you click on that button where it says open, you can change the access rights to the chest, meaning you can lock it. This can actually be kind of a big deal on servers. Most people will want to set aside a few items for themselves, even when you're playing with your closest friends, and this is one of the few early game ways of doing that. I also built a slab furnace as a little hat from the furnace for last episode up here. Now, if you really want to optimize down to the level of four pieces of cobblestone or so, you can build a slab furnace first if you like, but I just figure that pretty soon we'll have more of the stuff than I'll know what to do with. Okay, I've got a ton of rotten flesh here because basically this whole lake is one big, ambiguously Canadian zombie ice capades rink. So since I've got all of these formerly human steaks lying around, I figure I'll show you the right way to be a cannibal. You've got an 80% chance to get the hunger debuff every time you eat a piece, which lasts for 30 seconds, after which you'll have lost about as much satiety as you gained. That's how you know these are made from Canadian zombies. American zombies contain far more saturated fat. But check this out. Oh, um, I've ordered a piece for such the duration of the hunger debuff. You see? So if all you've got is rotten flesh to live off of, ew, wait for your hunger meter to get low and then go Oprah on that stack. Because we've got a garden, I'm putting that shit back in the chest. I'm gonna show you something thoroughly better. Just pull up the recipe here, got my blueberry and my raspberry. Is it cocktail o'clock already? Nay. The squeezer you need to make these is made from simple stone and it never runs out of durability, and all you need to make the bottles is just some sand and a furnace. Take a look at my hunger meter. A glug 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 glug. Mm-hmm. Berry blasts from magical crops go right to your thighs, giving you a total of four haunches max. We just drank as many calories as are in an entire cow. And did I get the bottle back? I did. Well, that's it. That's my new favorite food. Berry blasts are compact, they're easy to access, and they're easy to automate. They're perfect for the beginning of the game. I was heading out my front door about an hour ago when lightning struck right at my feet, and then five minutes later, right as I'm going back inside, lightning struck me a second time, and I keep getting hit with meteors. It's like God found out that I was the masturbatingest bear and decided he doesn't want to watch anymore. Hard to blame him. But I hope you like the cabin better than he does. This little piggy did build his house out of wood, which scares me, but... I've seen homeless shelters made out of cardboard that looked better than that starting house, so it had to go. The berry blast is probably going to give me screaming diarrhea later on, but we could use it for fertilizer. So, you can only make the berry blast with three specific berries, so we're going to start uprooting all the strawberries, some of these tomatoes, and replacing them with the very berry master rays. Ah, no, don't hurt me! Pfft, tomatoes. No match for the champ's right hook. There we go. Uh, don't worry, kids. This tree is, uh, just resting. She'll be back up soon. Anyways, the garden maintenance is done. We've already got more food than we could possibly eat out of that thing. The trick is just to start your garden early. So here's another trick to getting the most out of your wheat. Usually we're used to making bread like this, right? Three across. No. Bad. 
bad player. Instead of acting like a douche-nozzling fag muffin, try putting the wheat into a crafting table, and you'll get some flour. Barley works the exact same way. Good for cooking, or for selling as sham cocaine to some Dominicans who force you to flee to a cabin out in the woods. <laughs> when you cook the flour, you'll triple your yield. It'll be good to have some extra food to fall back on, because right now we don't have enough seeds to live only off of smoothies. Okay, so now that our food situation is taken care of, we've got to get our mittens on some iron next. Now, normally iron is more easy to catch in Minecraft than hepatitis at Mardi Gras, but on this map it might prove to be a little bit more challenging. You might have noticed last episode that we started out with about 50 books, so I went ahead and made a Bibliocraft bookcase. As you can see, it's pretty easy, and you can make most Bibliocraft items early in the game. Now, two of the books we started out with are just for this mod pack, just for TPPI. This here is a general introduction. It shows you some of the commands, how to check the change log, and it also tells you how to get at some of the summaries that the TPPI team has written for each one of their mods. Pretty cool. I like a pack that goes the extra mile. Blah. Aha, here we go. TPPI ore generation. This pack changes where ore spawns and how it spawns, and iron in TPPI spawns, let's see, from layers 57 to 33. Ah. Okay, we should be good to go on iron then. It looks like copper. Copper is going to be the hard part, and I'll show you why. Follow me down into my creepy basement. <laughs> Here. You see that water down there? This island was built on top of a big lake, and that's the original lake water underneath there. And we're already down to level 50, so I'm going to have to build some walls out of wood and tunnel underneath the lake, branch sideways, and then dig back up in order to get my hands on some copper. And some iron, too. That's okay, we can work with this. Okay, so I finished uh, digging all the way down. We've finally gotten past the water layer. All of these wooden blocks you see here, we're replacing a water source block. This is about how far I had to go down before I finally hit stone. And I peeked my head out above, and we're going to need to go west. That's going to be the quickest way to hit land, be able to dig up, and then get the copper and iron that we need. Ordinarily, this would have been fine. We would have been able to dig all the way down to the diamond layer, and that would have been the way that we would dig our ideal mine in vanilla Minecraft, but for us, we want iron early. I'm going to keep F7 on so that I can see where monsters are going to spawn. Just to conserve a few torches, we're still early. Also, if I press the backslash key, you see this enable cave mode? I've turned that off for the time being because that will let me see up to the surface so I'll know when I've dug far enough and can start digging up. Anyways, so I better get back to mining here. It shouldn't take more than maybe 30, 40 minutes for me to reach the other side, and I'll get back with you once I have. Hello, what have we here? A cave system. Oh, and a bat. We gotta get the kill shot on this bat. Let's get in there. Oh, we just got him. Perfect. So we absorb some of that bat's essence, and after I kill this creeper here, I'll show you why that's kind of a big deal. We have access to a mod called iTunes Morph Mod. That'll let us transform into anything that we've killed. Press the bracket key, bring up this menu here, and I can turn myself into a bat. You'll see me shrink to one block high. <laughs> I am darkness. I am the night. Being able to kill a bat early is kind of a big deal when you've got this mod, because it gives you access to unlimited creative mode flight. Yes, I did not stutter. You are that fast, it never runs out, it doesn't cost you power like a jetpack, and you can hover, just like creative mode. It's a big deal if you're building something big, to the point where it's kind of overpowered a little bit, to be honest. So what they've done in TPPI is they've disabled really all of the abilities that you get um, from morphine. It's purely cosmetic in TPPI, but they've added a different mod called Advanced Genetics to compensate for that. So we'll be getting our flight, but uh, not as early as you would be if you're playing, for example, in the Direwolf 20 or Monster Packs. If you're playing in those packs, definitely try and kill a bat as early as you can. Hey, hey, looky, looky what I found. Some abyssal stone, which looks nice over there. But here's what we came for. Iron for days. It just goes on and on. So this is exactly what we needed. This will last us a while because it takes actually a long time to kind of get out here. And also copper. So we're set for the beginning game with access to both of these things. We'll be able to take this back with us since my inventory is more or less full at the moment. But we'll make room for this. And then we'll head on back, and I'll show you a couple of new machines to close out the episode. Hey, hey, we are back home in our Sanctum Sanctorum. Let's see what the haul is. A full stack of iron, and half a stack, roughly, of copper ore. We've also got some tin, and uh, some certus quartz, 
even a little bit of aluminum, which we don't have much use for right now, but I figured, what the hey. I've also taken it upon myself to install some cobblestone stairs into my creepy basement for easy access. This way we don't have to jump up and down constantly, and that'll save us a lot of food. Something that you can do right away, because after your first mining trip, oh my gosh, so much cobble. I actually had to throw some away. I'm going to also show you something called the Grindstone from Applied Energistics. Here's the recipe. All this stuff is very easy to get, even the wooden gear, which you just make out of sticks. And unlike the other sources of ore doubling, this doesn't require any power, so it's good for us. We add a wooden crank, again made out of sticks. We put in our ore into the Grindstone on the left-hand side, and then we... Uh... Well, we punch it. We punch it a lot. And as you can see, it's not going around very fast here. Let's speed things up. Okay, how much did we get? Four. Huh, after all that. <laughs> see, this is what I'm getting at here with the grindstone. See, I used to use this machine all the time when starting off, as I'm sure a lot of you did too, but actually, I'm going to break it here, and I'm never going to use this thing again. It takes so long to do the ore doubling that you're actually better off going back down in the mine and just getting more ore, and then not bothering with ore doubling until you can get your hands on the pulverizer. And I promise you, that won't take long. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's just one last trick that I want to share with you for tonight. Take a look at that torch over there. That's no ordinary torch. That silvery colored torch is made with Tinkerer's Construct. If you just take a couple of pieces of cobblestone, you can make yourself some stone sticks. Place a piece of coal on top of that, and you've got torches that don't require any wood to make. Shout out to Ogre Castile on Reddit for letting me know about this one. That's actually going to save us a lot of time. So I've also used this to expand my torch coverage during the day. We've got most of the inlet covered, giving us sort of concentric circles of security. The outer ring is the Badlands, where all the monsters spawn, sometimes even during the day because the area is pretty well shadowed. It's going to take a lot of torches to brighten up that area, but once we do, the entire island will be safe. The mobs that spawn in the outer ring have a crazy long tracking distance. And so hilariously, what will sometimes happen is that they'll spawn during the day, and while I'm cutting down trees or tending to my garden, they'll track me across the entire frozen lake, light on fire, and by the time they reach the other side, they'll die and drop their items. So the lake is basically a rotten flesh conveyor belt right now. Since it's made of ice, monsters can't spawn on it because ice is transparent, but they can cross on foot. So I could make it even safer by melting all the ice and giving us a moat, but... Frankly, I like the convenience of being able to cross it myself. Then we've got the inlet, which is almost entirely covered in torches now. All we see spawning in here is blue slime because they spawn in a higher light level, at which even the slowest of pokes can escape from slimes. And then we've got the cabin inside, and that's our last stronghold. Pretty cool. Next time, we're going to be going on a quest for sheep in order to build ourselves a bed, as well as getting into some simple machines and some more mods. This is BR Brainerd. Catch you next time. Okay, what in the actual hell was that? It sounded like it came right next to my house. Oh, hello. Okay, that meteor was there before, but this one? This one is new. Right next to- and right on the same side, Jesus. Damn you, Notch!